Hello and welcome to our Married at First Sight after show. Tonight we have two amazing special guests, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I was like, I think he intentionally did not play the song so I could start singing. Oh, yeah. go, go for it, Heather. <laughs> yeah, Heather. Heather, you can sing it. No, so no, great. I'll pass. I'll pass. I'll pass. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We have an awesome show lined up t- for you guys. And Jamie and Doug will be speaking with us in a second. So yeah, we can't hey. wait for that. And I'm one of your hosts, Jamie Banks. And you can tweet me at Jamie Banks underscore. And with me... Hi guys, it's Heather Yared coming to you live. H Y So Fly for the Married at First Sight after show. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Heather Yared. And I'm Allie Nasta, and you can find me on Twitter at Allie Nasta, and that's A L L Y. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to chat with Jamie and Doug, so I think yes. we should call them in because we yeah. have so much to talk about tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm just shocked that, you know, we're going to get the opportunity to speak with them. Yes. So super excited, super pumped We've to had that. two amazing couples this season on our after show, and I'm so excited to talk with them. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be too. great. Me too. I can't wait to hear their scoop on, like, what they thought this episode and this season's like compared to theirs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we're dialing them in. Oh, yes. Hello. Still oh, so <laughs> I'm just so excited. <laughs> Guys, there was so much love on tonight's episode. I can't even wait to get into Hello? it. Oh. Hello, Doug. Mm-hmm. It's the girls from After Buzz. How are you? <laughs> ah! Hi, Jamie. Hi. Yay. How are you guys? This is Jamie and Doug Very Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We're super excited to have you on here. And obviously, we have a ton of questions that we want to hear and the fans have requested to hear. But we're going to start off with the huge. And so, tonight's episode, what did you guys think? Well, first thought is obviously the hype is all about Nick and Sonia. And, um, all thoughts from previous episodes aside, I think Nick really showed that he's trying, you know, for what may be the first time. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Listen, now is what week are they at? Eight or not eight? I'm sorry, like four, four or five. Like now, now is the time where, yeah, I don't know, eight. The whole thing is <laughs> um, now, now is the time where you start to think about uh, the end coming. And it does draw uh, extra doubt in your mind. It does beg the question, you know, do you see this as a forever thing? Because at the end of the, the tunnel, it's, you know, do you want to stay married or get a divorce? At least that's what I, that's how I kind of saw it was, all right, now we have this decision to make. And, and you have to think long term. Uh, Jamie will say till she's blue in the face that she was 50-50 <laughs> on the last day, but she was 100% staying with me. I was really <laughs> Speaking, yeah, speaking of that, we were curious. You know, guys, we're seeing such similarity. We have Nick and Sonia, and the situation was, I'm not attracted. Now, Jamie, you were very honest when you guys were on, and we see you and Doug also struggle with that. What are the similarities that you are seeing that maybe make you believe that they might be staying married versus not? I think the first thing is is that uh, he has to take his shirt off first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and and for me is when Doug took his shirt off and I paid attention. I was like, oh, he's hot. Like, <laughs> actually, <laughs> let me just open my eyes and actually see what I'm looking at here. But um, what accent was that, by the way? That was just my full accent. Oh. <laughs> but uh, no, I think the thing about them is in him in particular is that. He's a dude, and dudes always want what they can't have. And the minute she was like, you're not treating me right, I'm out, which told props for Sonia for that because, Mm -hmm. you know, I just think a lot of women tend to be like, oh, he doesn't think I'm attractive. This girl was like, "Uh, if you don't realize how hot I am, then that's your loss. And I am like, I will worship her for that. (laughs) I totally totally disagree. No, I think he... I think that that she... She got scared and needed her space, which, granted, it's fine. Yeah, she, got- she, knows, she knows that she's in an experiment, and you have very little time within the experiment to decide whether you're going to stay married or get a divorce. And to leave the house is counterproductive. Yeah, but Doug, you face challenges, you open up, 
and you deal with it. The way you get stronger. We disagree here. We're, we're, we're <laughs> the way you get stronger is to go through those moments. That's what defines. Well, it's purpose. true. I mean, it's true. I think the only reason why give up on. I think the only reason why Doug and I are so strong today is because we went through those hard times during the experiment so it wasn't the thing is the thing that's weird about going to this experiment is that if everything is like easy peasy rainbow and butterflies during the experiment and then afterwards like after all the cameras are gone that's when the hard times come it's like was everything fake during the experiment like at least that's how I would think about it like was it all fake during it or was that real it's just it's strange to to live that life I, I mean now we're so far out that I feel like our life is just normal oh. and boring oh, but strange <laughs> scenario stranger yeah but no, I think that, um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I think ultimately Nick is a, a typical dude and he wanted, he wants what he can't have. And before Sonia was so committed and she was willing to do anything to like make this marriage work. And he, you know, it was like the straw that put the camel's back when he flipped out on her like that. And she's just like, she's so good though. Like I'm the kind of girl I would be like, F you. Like, no way this is going to work out. Because you're a spirited person. <laughs> okay, it's so much better than me. I, I mean, I would be like, what a loser. He doesn't think I'm hot. Whatever. <laughs> but she's like, give him. And you can see it in her eyes. Like, it's so interesting. I'm interested yeah. to see how, you know, how this all works, all unfolds. Yes, yeah, totally. I, I totally agree with you, Jamie. I think it does make her more appealing to him. I'm curious, though, who do you guys think will actually last at the end of this process? Derek and Heather. <laughs> Good one. Uh, that was a great yes, one. Yes, so do we. So uh, do we. I have my money on Derek and Heather. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was, just watching, I was watching with a girlfriend. Doug had a softball game, so I went to a girlfriend's house to watch tonight. And she was like, tonight, during the episode, she was like, don't you think maybe you can see some rekindling? Like maybe yeah. Heather will be like, oh, I made a quick judgment and it was wrong and I should give it a chance. And I'm like, eh, I don't know about that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave her a little bit of that too. Yeah, for a second yeah. I thought that, but then no. Yeah, we did it. We did have our high hopes for them as well. And then all of a sudden it just kind of went from, it went from 100 to negative 100. Exactly, exactly. There's been some rumors, guys. And we did speak, as you know, we had Courtney and Jason on last week and we got curious with them a little bit about about this too so now we want to hear you you know your all's answers and your experience there's this rumor around that there's a stipend and that there's money and that, that your guys are paid to stay together can you talk about any of that because our fans would love to know yeah. if that can be a motive I'm, or not well first of all we can definitely talk about it Second we of get ten dollars a day that we stay together <laughs> <laughs> i would love i wish that was true because you know how much money we have right now we're like about to move in with my in-laws because we're broke that's what i'm gonna write a blog about that yeah. because it's a little embarrassing but and i'm not gonna talk about it anymore <laughs> because it's so embarrassing but i wish that was true because maybe then we could this day after well, blog what? Anybody. yeah <laughs> here's an exclusive doug and jamie are moving in with their in-laws oh wow well, <laughs> are we are we the first to break that yeah, hey <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh it's really it's really sad but so i wish that was true because we would buy a home and we would have a really I, nice car and I would, and and the I don't know for for me going through it and the first season like we didn't have any other season to go by um I I take marriage so very seriously and I think you have to go so in so very seriously and <laughs> honestly with if if that were the case it's really sad for marriage just because that shouldn't be in your mind by the time you get into you know, yes, you're going on a TV show. Yes, there's, um, there, you're going to get paid some, somewhat, but not to stay together. I mean, it's it's a marriage, and um, any anybody looking to get into married at first sight or even um, think about thinking about it, you, you have to you have to be committed for marriage, um, unless you just don't care about marriage and you're just looking to get on TV. I mean, that's. But even then, you can see that that doesn't even work out because you you have to, I mean, you can't live with someone that you hate, right? You can't, mm -hmm. like, pretend to love someone that you don't. And I think that's, I think that's ultimately what you can see. I mean, I, I can't imagine, I don't, I don't really think that anybody on Married at First Sight, I mean, I'm a hopeless romantic, but I don't believe that anybody on Married at First Sight goes into it hoping to, like, hoping that maybe the rumors are true that you make so much... It's reality TV. I think everybody knows now that you don't yeah. make a lot of money in reality TV. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Right. but, yeah. 
I'm, I'm curious. So now saying that, right? I have. I mean, we have to ask. So I uh, hear what you're saying that if you're not attracted to somebody, then you're not going to want to live with them. Well, we see that Heather jumped ship really quickly. Yeah. So do you believe that? what I just said is true, that she jumped ship too quickly, or maybe that she wasn't really 100% into the commitment, like Doug, you were just saying, just in general about people. What are your all's thoughts? Do you have a side that you've chosen? Who do you think's right? Who do you think's wrong? First of all, I love this question because I feel like, first of all, let me just start off by saying, I really like Heather and Derek for different reasons. But you know, that they're both very genuine and I think they were both very serious, to be honest. I think mm -hmm. Heather, Anybody who says that Heather wasn't serious is nuts because that girl went in there. I think if they say she was quick to jump out and maybe she, she should have had like an open mind and she should have tried a little harder or at least given the whole experiment a chance, I would 100% agree. But to say that she wasn't 100% serious, they're nuts. This girl went in there so serious and the minute that she felt anything other than like and other thing, I think the minute she felt anything other than like absolute love for them because he's her husband i think she freaked out and she was like because that's what happened to me like seriously when you're in your wedding dress like imagine it i'm in your wedding dress walking down the aisle saying i do to a complete stranger and then having like nothing in common and being so unattractive and like you know like it, it, it's freaky it's really scary and i think that that's what happened to her that she was super serious about it but she didn't give it a chance like she didn't open her mind she just kind of got like scared and closed off and was like eh, no nope, this isn't gonna work uh, and I think Derek is like the most hopeless romantic of, of a man that I've ever met because <laughs> he's just like she can do anything and I will yeah. still want to make this <laughs> his ring was still on his finger yeah. like even this episode his ring was still on there yeah that's like sad that almost like I mean that like brought tears to my eyes I'm like oh he's like he, what? I hope he's committed to the experiment yeah. yeah but she already like chose a divorce and it breaks my heart she, quit, she gave up yeah, but you can't be mad at her. I mean, you can be mad at her for that, but you can't be mad at her for not having feelings. Because if it comes out that she talked it through, had a chance to say, listen, this is what bothers me about you, um, either stop or it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. If she had that, uh, that conversation, and I haven't spoken with Heather or Derek about it, but if she had that conversation with them, then yes, it's justified. Other than that, she got scared, she quit. It, it's just, it, it doesn't sit right. It is a little bizarre that that they didn't like try at least the six weeks. I mean, the whole yes. idea behind it. Yes, it. I know, does. Right, but right, right. Is, right. Is like, it's just an experiment. And when you go into it, like this is the thing is like don't you know you're flawed like you're marrying a stranger yeah. like i knew i had no <laughs> issue <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's one thing our fans have brought up too it seems that when you're interviewing her on unfiltered you interviewed her in a different place or it looks like there's some editing there where they're cutting in and where you're in one area and she's in another what's the deal there you may be getting the exclusive on this too because no okay. one's ever asked me that i mean i've <laughs> talked about it on twitter it's not a huge speaker it's very obvious that she's in a complete different setting yeah but um heather is a flight attendant and so i went down to miami to do to host unfiltered um you know a couple like a month i don't know how long ago it was but in any case she was working and obviously she's a flight attendant it's not like she could like come on her you know dinner break right. she was I don't, I don't know where she was and so she wasn't there to, to be interviewed for that for that weekend. And um, so, yeah, she was interviewed at a whole different time in a whole different area. And, uh, yeah, so exclusive. Heather was not interviewed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then speculating about that. Like, so you wouldn't believe the amount of tweets I get about that. And I'm like, oh, my, I, I can't answer you all individually. Like, yes. I wish I could put Yes, oh, we yes. Go. Well, you heard it first here. Yeah. After Buzz TV, Married at First Sight After Show, Heather yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Wait, so Jamie and Doug, I have a question for you. So obviously seeing all the couples, who do you relate with most this season? You know what? It's so strange because I feel like I can find characteristics. Well, definitely not Lily and Tom. Are you kidding me? They're like smitten and like <laughs> in love right off the bat. I know. Well, I think you can find characteristics in, like, I feel like I kind of relate a little bit with Heather, to be honest, because when I first, you know, when I, when Doug and I got married, I did the same exact thing as she did. I got so, I, it just didn't feel right. It felt so wrong. There was no chemistry. I wasn't attracted. And I shut down and I was like, no, this is not going to work. Like, this was a bad decision. Fortunately, I 
you know, I, I don't know what, fortunately I was able to open my mind. And for me, it was really, I just had so much faith in, in the experts and I really, I, and I really did know I was flawed and I wanted to help. And so I guess that's what kind of made me open my mind again. Um, and maybe nothing to do with me. Yeah, not, <laughs> not at all. I mean, forget that. <laughs> no, but like on the wedding day is when I really closed my mind. And then that same day, I, I, you know, I was able to kind of like, I mean, I really just wanted to run away. To be honest. <laughs> Love you. Um, yeah. So I feel like I relate with Heather and obviously Nick and Sonia, their whole storyline is like basically Doug's and mine in the sense that I wasn't attracted to him. And then I became attracted to him. And then it, like, yeah. How about you, Doug? I, um, I don't know, there's a combination of Tom and Derek, I think. I feel like as, as an outsider looking in, Doug and Tom are so much alike. Like, straight up to the fact that so they too. both love surfing in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that he said this is actually really interesting to me because, you know, Tom said to Lily recently, don't, don't, what did he say? He said something about, don't put me in the same category as every guy that, you know, that hurt you in the past. And I was like, oh my God, that's what Doug used to say. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love you guys. You're yeah. amazing. Yes, well, yes. Well, totally. what do you think, Jimmy, what do you think helped you, like, change? You know, see, obviously we didn't see Heather stick out the six weeks, so she couldn't experience what you did. What do you think is what helped you get through that closed-off stage? Well, first and foremost, my husband was so patient and he was not like not pushy not I can't and I think truly that is like the most important thing was that Doug did not push me to be a wife or to talk about being a wife or being married or and like when I wasn't attracted to him he wasn't offended he was like you know he was he realized I was just way overwhelmed and super stressed and it was just it was a bizarre scenario it's very strange marrying a stranger imagine it yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, and he, I think he under he like I felt like he like empathized with me and kind of like didn't like take it personally, you know. And I I truly think that that's what kind of sets us apart from all every single season. There's a story like Doug's and mine, and unfortunately, every other season they haven't worked out. And I I really think that it's 100 percent Doug that we worked out was because he was just so patient and never did he push me and have expectations for me to be a wife or. I don't know. He was just very, and we became friends first, really. Like, I I, yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I, I guess I feel like that's kind of what worked for us, anyways. Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, Doug, Doug. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's awesome. That's I'm awesome. So big now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's amazing to hear. And I think that's, it's just so great that you guys were both able to mesh in such, a, like, a, a hard time for both your emotions, you know. He obviously wanted you to open up more and everything. So I think it's amazing how you really stuck it out and obviously are so, like, in love. Like, in love. Yes, Happy. yes. And inquiring, my, inquiring minds want to know. Any updates about maybe a potentially married at first sight the second year? Or I guess no, now I the third. Happy two that. and a half year anniversary. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, we actually passed the two and a half year mark. We celebrate we used to celebrate actually, you know how Lily celebrated one one month yeah. tonight with Tom? Yeah. I like made us celebrate every single month the first oh. year. <laughs> so cute. That yeah. makes it for a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Each month when you marry a stranger. So good props to Lily for starting that celebration right now. Yeah. And I think that's a good sign in their relationship. I don't know. I'm like weird about that, but I think that that, that signifies that she anticipates more months together. I don't know. But yeah. for sure, for sure. Right. For sure. So was that yeah. a was that was that a yes? Maybe there's a married at first sight the third year or no? I would be totally into it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey. I don't know if they'd be into filming at my parents' house. Um, I think that would they would absolutely yeah, be they into would that. definitely love that. <laughs> I don't know if, yeah, <laughs> well, that's something we're talking about. We're not. We do have our married life on YouTube that everyone can watch. We film a video every week, and right now it's being postponed. We just like resigned our contract, but um, they'll come back in the fall, so Good. you guys can yeah. see it all on YouTube. Wonderful. <laughs> and do you Wonderful. want to repeat the name of it? For listeners? Yeah, it's called Nick's Nice, and you can find it under FYI's channel. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's, YouTube. it's on YouTube, yeah. You can literally just Google Married at First Sight, Married Life, and they'll pop up. And they are the greatest videos ever. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I watch them. Yes, I, I binge-watch them over and over and over, so they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We are thrilled to have you on. We're appreciative that you wanted to talk with us because we obviously watch every move you guys make and we're all about it and we're all rooting for you guys to continue. Uh, we are so happy to be on. We would love to be on more. We are huge yeah. fans of Come After back TV. every week. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And yeah, we all watched you on the Tomorrow Show, which was great. So yeah. thank you. Oh my God. I'm a huge fan. Like after being on the Tomorrow Show, I'm such a huge fan of Kevin and Maria. I yes. mean, it's, um, they're just such good, good people. Mm, yeah. Really yes, are. yes. Especially creating and making this, giving opportunities yeah. to people. So mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. There's a lot of similarities between you guys too, from what I, yeah. from what I see and hear, at least from them. So they, Kevin does say hello. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello too. I'll have to email him. I'm going to. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Talk to you Thanks again. So right time. Time. <laughs> Bye. You know, the best, you know what the best part of this is? Tell us. The fact that I'm not wearing any pants giving this interview. <laughs> I think that's another after exclusive. <laughs> that's awesome. We love it. We love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you again. <laughs> Bye. Good night. <laughs> That, so was that was great. That was amazing. They are amazing. They are amazing. They are amazing. I love their chemistry. And he's just he just teases her and they're just they're just perfect together. They I are. Know. They are. I'm glad they're they're gonna come back on. We'll yeah. have them back on. Yeah, That'd definitely. Awesome. I, yes. I definitely think it was interesting to hear like the comparisons to Heather and like, you know, what kind of the differences of sticking it mm -hmm. out is. You yes. Know? I, yeah, I love that she said that she really empathized with Heather. And I wonder if Heather had stayed in the process longer, like the question you asked Allie could, would she have changed her mind like yeah. Jamie did yeah I don't think that she would have changed her mind at all but I, I, don't. I just wish that she had given it six weeks so we could have at least known yeah. totally 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 yeah mm -hmm. um we, we're up on the live chat too so we oh, actually okay. have the laptop with us now yes. so we're not all looking into space like we used to but <laughs> speaking of chemistry of course, Tom and Lillian uh, tonight love tonight in the air. <laughs> I love love and I love watching them well, we only see Lillian say something about love, but, you know, just love. <laughs> they're so cute, and, I mean, they're so strong together. And I, it's funny, because I feel like the first episodes, we saw potential in them, but they've just grown so much. But mm -hmm. I feel like that's a real relationship. That's what happens in relationships, and it's awesome to see them evolve. Yes, yeah. it is. It and is. And I was surprised to see him so concerned that she was late. I know that might sound bad, but, you know, he, he, he's working, she's working. It really seemed to get to him. But then the gift made up for it. Yeah, yeah. I felt like he, I, th I think he really was offended by that, but I think maybe he thinks that she cares more about work than him. Oh yeah. But for me, I just feel like I, f I, I'm a very professional woman and career focused. So I feel like it, it's kind of weird that he's so off put by it, but I guess he just wants to know he's important too. But yeah. I know that he is in her life. Yeah, I was just super excited to actually see a guy that did care like that. I was like, man, where's my, I mean, <laughs> again, Tom. <laughs> Call your brother. <laughs> it's like, I love that he engaged in her in the conversation, let it go, didn't hold over. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that I'll probably get some crap for right now in saying this, but from what I've seen, men are better at that than than women holding on to that. He was like, okay, I'm not going to hold on to it at dinner. I'm going to let that go and we'll take it from there. And they ended up having an amazing one month anniversary. Yeah. yeah. And the present, the gift. Oh my gosh. I thought that was beautiful. And you know, I, I feel like also with Lillian, she's really opening up and showing like, I want to show you another way that I care about you. And that's exactly what she did. And we both hear them say how much they care about each other, that they're so worried of, of of what the other one's thinking etern internally because they don't want to bring it up because yeah. they're both feeling so deeply. Yes. yes. I love the one man one month anniversary. It's so cute. I feel like, especially because in a relationship, usually, hopefully, you've made it much longer than a month. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just super cute. Yes, but it kind of made me sad, though, because at the same time, I thought of, like, Nick and Sonia. And Because mm -hmm. remember, he did the one yeah. week. Yeah. He got her gifts the one week. And I was that's like, true. oh, man. I was like, God, that's that's... Mm, that's unfortunate. But I, I think the gifting and the surprise, that's that's what keeps relationships alive. Yeah, and I mean, even if it's something little, and like we just heard with Jamie and Doug, they celebrated there, like, every month they celebrate. And I think it's just a, a fun way to keep things exciting. Yeah. So what did you guys think of his vows? Well, I like that he remembered them. <laughs> <laughs> or that he had time to do it. Yeah. And it was creative that he used the core values of what they are. I, these mm -hmm. are the, still the words that I use. Now I'm going to elaborate on it. But I did get teary-eyed when he said... This is no longer an experiment. This is a marriage. I loved it. 
But I was a little bit weirded out with one thing that Lillian said. She said, no, no matter how long we last, whether it's a short time or a long time, that really meant a lot to me. Did you think that was weird that she said, no ma- matter how long we last? I feel like that's her way of kind of protecting herself by saying whether we last or not, because in her heart, she wants it to last. Mm-hmm. But she's also guarding herself from that six week mark when it's 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 make or break. So I think that's why she said that, because it's kind of putting that in the air. Hey, I might not, like, you know, I don't know what you're thinking. So I think that's her way of protecting mm-hmm. Interesting that you guys brought that up, because I, I felt that she seemed to pull back this episode. I know she gave the gift. I know she mm-hmm. was super excited. They were joking again about the toothpaste. But there was something about her energy. Maybe she was just GSDing, which is awesome. So that's get shit done in my world. Um, but, you know, with her job. So she was on her game, and that's awesome. And I would never mm-hmm. fault that. But... I did see and think when he finally opened up and said, this is a marriage, she made that statement. Yeah. I think it was subconscious, though. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think she meant well by it. It just sounded a little bit off. And what about in the car when he was talking and she wasn't listening? (laughs) I mean, I think all of us are guilty of that (laughs) at one point or another. But it was funny that he was like, I was just talking about being a gay cowboy in a rodeo. She was like, what? She still did not get it. That was (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I thought that was, the, the, that was the epitome of, oh, there's a married couple. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes you just get in your own little world. And, I mean, obviously, especially with, like, phones these days, I feel like sometimes that kind of distracts. I get distracted so easily these days. But who would want to be, like, in a conversation about blood? Well, I'm going to go to the doctor and get my blood checked out. I'd, <laughs> I'd also be like, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm closing a deal, I'm going to be like, Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly what she did. <laughs> I think we saw Sonia also closed off. Speaking of that theme, mm-hmm. taking a step back. Obviously, Lily and Tom, no, I do not mean you were closed off at all. You were amazing and you were on point. Yeah. Sonia holding back. I feel it. Oh, go ahead, Ali. No, I just, I, with, with Sonia holding back, I understand where she's coming from. Because obviously, it, it just sucks because they are in a six-week experiment. So, or they're in this experiment together. Sorry, eight weeks. I don't know why I said six weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're in this experiment together, and I, I feel like it's it's ha- harder for her to open up to realize, hey, like, I need to remember this is only a short-term period because I know myself, too, where when you're having emotions like that and you feel like someone's kind of almost rejected you, it's really hard to just just jump back in. So I understand where she's coming from, but it just kind of is unfortunate that we only have a couple of weeks to really close this marriage and make it official. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I feel like she's waiting for a grand gesture from him to apologize because I feel like she thinks that he's not putting in any effort to the relationship or at least to say sorry. And so she's just waiting for something big to happen, but she doesn't know what it is. Yes, both of them are still not communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are not still... Let me, let me take that one step back. They are definitely communicating because in their activities, which I'm sure we'll touch on in a minute, they were speaking more. They were laughing again. When it comes to what they really want, neither of them are really mentioning it. Well, I feel like there's this wall when they talk to each other. Like, I, I just want to, like, come, get like get it out of yourself because they just don't. They, they talk the surface feelings like, oh, yeah, we should come over to the house. You should come over. It's like, no, yeah. not like, hey, I'd really like you to stay tonight. I really want to show you how I'm feeling. He just kind of is very like, oh, yeah, if you want to stay, you can. Like, yeah, you know, that's yeah. not going to go anywhere. Not at all. And my fear was that when she was in the car and Sonia was saying, my logic is saying run, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The hopeless romantic in me is saying, I don't remember. Stay. Like, stay. Mm-hmm. It's always a fear when couples get into these moments where they make decisions based off of either ego or their heart. It's mm-hmm. always said, like, you have to make action take action create and cultivate a relationship from your heart even if you have been slammed Mm -hmm. even if you have texted 10 times Mm -hmm. you have to keep pushing and i'm thinking we're seeing a little bit of ego here we're seeing her block off and and get reserved and as much as i support her and her decision you guys know that i was the advocate last time being like i'm so glad she left as jamie Mm -hmm. said tonight most girls would be like oh he doesn't like me what can i do more to make you like me no she walked and i loved it but I disagree with you guys. I, it's time for her to go back. It's yeah. time for her. She opened up to the experiment. She said she was going to do it. Took her ring off. She should put it back on. And even if he's not saying it, she should be the one to be like, I know he's not going to say it. I'm going to move in for the experiment. Purposes. Yeah, I think yeah. he should say say it and express how he feels and she should move back. Because I think there's only two weeks left in this process. She's got to go back to move forward because right now they keep saying how great friends they are. But I feel like the luck. They don't have to be in love, but you have to at least like each other a little more than friends to stay married. 
Definitely, yeah, I, definitely. And I, I definitely, I, Nick should be saying, come back, come back, mm-hmm, come back. Yeah. Which his friend was pushing at the end, which was hilarious. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> was a genius. Rick gave the best advice. We <laughs> loved your advice. We both, we were all like, yay! To, to get a six-pack of abs, yeah, you do, do you, one. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what Nick needed to hear because we saw him say, I shouldn't have to work in anything. No, that's exactly right. Yeah. I, I literally, I think we all jumped up and like praised, yes. praised Rick for He that. should so be on the show. He's the wisest. Guys. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I mean, oh, not that the other guys are white. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, we're going, we went a little too far. But but so, so I was really surprised to see them feed the homeless. That activity was touching, and I do believe that Nick got to see the woman that he really liked mm-hmm. and really thought was attractive in that moment. I've never seen something like that on this show or on mini shows where couples go out and actively do that. Yeah, that was so yeah. sweet. And I think you're right. I think he really sees why he liked her and it's coming back. Totally. Well, he had mentioned, at, like, every time they talked about her career and about her, they're like, what do you think about her? He always mentioned her career and how he thought it was so honorable of her to do something like that. And he really appreciated that as as her, as an individual. So I think it was so important for her to kind of, like, show that side of her because, like we said, we haven't really seen them do much besides, mm-hmm. like, go out to eat food and be in the house. Yeah. So as an audience, I think it was great to finally see them open up in a different light. Yeah, oh, yeah. and the way, the way she looked at him when they were writing the cute messages on the bags where she was like I want to open up to him and she like looked at him like biting her lip I think Aww. she was biting her I was like oh I remember that feeling Ooh, like. very cute very cute yeah I hope they can go he owned it in this episode and he said it's kind of hard to believe though because he's like she's super she's beautiful she's really attractive yet he's still not saying it and I, I just it kind of that kind of makes me annoyed because he's going back on his word I don't, what do you feel, Nick? What do you What do you actually think? Do you actually think she's pretty, or do you mm-hmm. sing that for the cameras? Yeah, right. And I I hate to say that, but you know we saw him say that in the beginning, and now that he's opened up saying, and and we've seen Nick and Sonia kind of, they they lied about you know how yeah. they, so maybe they just are scared to tell people how they actually feel. It's, yeah, it's really interesting you say that because I was thinking if he just told her what he's telling the cameras they would be fine because he's totally opening up. But now that you're saying that, I'm like, oh, maybe he is. Just, yeah, so I don't think he's faking it, but I. But it's why just kind is of, there's so a disconnect. Hard. Yeah. And I feel like it's okay that you're shy and it's hard to express your feelings, but I feel like at this point in the relationship, you should just kind of get over it and do it. Yes, honestly, you know you have two weeks left. Put so everything on the table. <laughs> right. You know, right. like, why not? You have nothing left to lose at this point. The only thing, I mean, obviously, but divorce, but mm. at this point, they're already having struggles. So just put everything on the table. Show all of your emotions. Figure it out. Yes. And this, you both wanted this, and they both talked about how much they wanted in the beginning, and we saw them give so much on the honeymoon, and obviously, that was a honeymoon shows different sides of people because it's like all fun and adventurous but I just feel like there's just kind of getting closed off and they're not really being themselves whether the experts whether people think the experts did good or not this season I truly believe that however Nick and Sonia turn out they should have ended up together I do mm-hmm. believe it was a very strong pair and they look so strong for the first like two, three weeks, I would say. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, remember we were Team Sonic all the way. I thought they were so adorable. Their banter was so cute, but then something, something went wrong. And maybe something behind the camera, I mean, obviously the whole, I don't think she's attractive, but I just Mm -hmm. feel like we went from him saying he thought she was attractive and he really cared about her to that. So I don't know what got him to that point of really not liking her. I think it was the alcohol. I think he had a lot of alcohol, and I think something went bad when they had sex, where they had an awkward moment, because they're already awkward when they're having basic conversations on the (laughs) couch. I mean, I'm just saying. So I'm sure someone got nervous or something happened when they were having sex, which caused that to kind of rise, and then it went from there. But I definitely believe that what we see Tom and Lillian doing, and we hear them kind of say this when they're bowling with their friends and how they're both saying the exact same thing, just like you two are saying, they're talking, they're owning it, they're calling each other out. Yeah, and with Tom and Lillian, you can tell that they both are really happy, they both want it to work out, they're scared because obviously you don't want to be rejected, but they both are on the same page versus Sonia and Nick, they want it to work out, but they're in, it's just, I don't know. So unsure. Yeah, yeah, I was shocked, though, when Lillian was telling her friend what was happening, and then she said, I love him. Yes! Oh, that was awesome. It was amazing yes, to hear that. Yes! 
and Tom, they were basically saying the exact same thing. And yeah. I, like, they both were saying how I feel like I've known them for so long. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we've seen that. And I, I feel like I've known them forever just yes. because their love has been mm-hmm. so natural and so easy. It's just come so easy to them. Obviously, they've had their problems, like Lillian had mentioned in this episode. But I just think that they're they're really going to go, like, it's going to be great. Yeah, because the there's only two more weeks left, so I can't see anything bad happening in yeah, the next no- two weeks. Oh, yeah, I think they're going to be married. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did you guys see that when, when they were cutting to her in her real estate in the apartment? Does that look familiar to anybody else? I swear that was the clip from episode one. I will remember I that neon yellow. I think they kind of do reuse some clips, so yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Yes. I was like, I know that neon yellow tank top because I love color and I was like I believe this is from like the first episode but yeah. I wasn't sure I just want to see if you yeah. guys that. but I'm glad that we saw the activities the surfing I don't understand how these women are just killing it in surfing Heather in the beginning yeah. she did an amazing job Lillian did an amazing job I I, I couldn't lift myself. I literally think <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no way. No way. Have you, have you ever done at least paddleboarding? No. Really? I don't ever, no, I don't ever do anything fun. I work too much. I'm like, <laughs> everyone's like, you know this? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then. But like, even if you're on it. vacation, you've never done like a surfing excursion or something? I no. haven't either. We need to yeah. go surfing. Yeah, I know, Jamie. Next episode. Yes, <laughs> yes, never, We're never. We're going to come back with some clips and we're just going <laughs> <laughs> we'll to be all surfing. <laughs> but look, I mean, again, Lillian embraces, Tom loves this. You know, we always see him surfing. She's like, I was afraid that I was going to bust my butt and. She didn't say break a bone, but she was afraid she was going to get hurt. She still embraced it. They're yeah. really opening up to each other. And I love hard. that he wanted to show her that it's about fun, too, and not just work. And I think he accomplished that. Definitely. Definitely. I'm curious if he's finally, or if he is going to say anything to her. That might be one thing we'll see. I guess I'll save it for predictions. Yeah. Okay. But I was going to say, yeah. you know, I'll have something. That's... Yeah. So um, back to Nick and Sonia. What did you think of their conversation in the car when basically they addressed the issues? Do you call that addressing? Because I don't. I call it masking and sugarcoating <laughs> again. Around. Yes, rainbows and lollipops. Okay, she did very straightforward say, I don't think that I'm the one that you hurt, yet you're asking me to do something. He then leveraged, this is an experiment. So I didn't like that. It's like he didn't want to say it. She's like, you're the one that hurt me. It was an experiment. You shouldn't be taking your ring off. You shouldn't be doing this. That's a cop out. That's mm-hmm. a way to not say come back come yeah. back I, come back i mean I've, I've seen we've seen nick so far and he seems to be a great guy but i think something that he also does is he's not like we said i mentioned this last episode he's not realizing he's not taking himself out of the situation and putting so and like putting himself in sonia's shoes empathy. how does she feel oh empathy and, they mentioned that on unfiltered that he yeah. was like i have to learn how to practice empathy. yeah because he's really just thinking about his own emotions and how yeah. he feels and he's like well she's not back in the house and it's like well, why? Try to figure that out a little bit, mm-hmm. and then maybe you can understand how she's feeling, and then then you can put yourself aside for a second. Yeah. I think that's something he really, he like, well, he clearly does struggle with it, but we Definitely. see that a lot. And I think in that car conversation, he said, oh, I thought we moved past it, but clearly you haven't moved past it because she hasn't moved back in. Exactly, and then even at the end of their Cinco de Mayo, was it? Cinco yeah. de Mayo celebration, she's hinting. It's like pulling teeth. She's like, so I don't think I'm going to drive home. I was like, Nick, okay, so I thought, that whole conversation was just awkward because there was cameras, but you think it would have been awkward without cameras? I think it would not have been awkward without them. I don't think it was awkward. I think that was just them, but yeah. this is what pissed me off. You look at his facial expression when she's like, I don't think I'm going to drive home. He goes, so yeah, I, I feel like she was like, she yeah, wanted no. him to say, why don't you stay the night? Yeah, but he just did this. He was just like, like, no, say, great, don't drive home, babe. I don't want you to yeah, crash while exactly you're drunk. what Rick was saying. Like, be like, come on, baby. Like, no, this is not how it's going to be. But we clearly aren't seeing Nick do any of that. And it's just like, it literally is pulling teeth to get them both to kind of, con- like, get the words what they're trying to say out. Yeah, yeah. this is, this is, now it's almost to me, like, baffling. Yeah. I'm just super confused. Yeah. She's such an in-tune person. I don't know if it's the editing that we're seeing or what I would believe. She also did say this. I came on here. I wanted to be committed. I wanted to have this. I do believe that she tried to the best of her ability, taking into consideration how her emotions were so into it that she didn't want to lose it, which I think blocked her communication a little Mm -hmm. bit. But even at the end of this party, she's hinting again. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. What should we do? What should we do? How did this go? And he's just not taking the bait. Um, wait, can we talk about <laughs> when the them. little kid? Oh, my God. Ah! Was... He was like, Nick, no one's talking. It's yeah, silent. That, that was, was awesome. Well, what's the that next so chapter? Funny. But, yeah, it, it was a good point. It was kind of like, what's the next chapter? It would be nice if maybe Nick said, 
oh, I'd really love it if she came back, or I hope we works out with us. Yeah, we all. all jumped up because we were all thinking it. And that's what I feel like whenever we're in a situation watching Nick and Sonia talk, we're all thinking these, like, so many things in our head that we want them to say, but they never do. Totally, totally. It's a five-year-old. Nobody's saying anything. Yeah. Like, ding, 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 ding. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. That's is true. There's no communication being <laughs> So I think that would have happened on or off the camera. Yeah. That just would have been awkward, period. Yeah, like, <laughs> So we haven't talked about Heather and Derek much. What did you think of their interaction? Oh, Heather saying that she thinks maybe she should have second guessed it or lies. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I think she her answer to oh, do you what did you learn? She's oh, I learned that I trust myself. I learned that I trust myself. That's that's good. I was like, what? That, that that's barely any reflection of where did you grow? I, I will mm-hmm. give it to her last time, the episode before. She said I need to communicate better, but in this, very much yeah. like I trust myself. Okay. Well, we did say last time we we saw a lot of growth, um, and I I truly believe that maybe she did grow from this. But I think at the same time, it's really hard to watch them together because I just don't think I just don't think she was really. I don't know. I hate saying this, but I don't know if she was as committed to it. But like Jamie said earlier, you know, I think she was just scared and she blocked herself off from feeling this way. Because when she did see Derek for the first time, I feel like her face lit up. Yeah, her face did. I thought for a second I was crossing my fingers that they would get back together. Oh, no! That would be torture! But it was a short, (laughs) short second and I realized it was not going to happen. Yeah. But although I think Derek really was hoping that they would at least give it another shot. He totally felt some type of way. We see that when, oh, so are you guys, whatever Rachel says about a divorce, and she immediately goes, no, you know, she mm-hmm. puts her foot down, and he's like, then what are you waiting for? I, I'm ready. Like, then why yeah. haven't you signed the papers yet? And then he says yeah. it, and then he looks to the side. He was really hurt. Yeah. But I thought it was great, which I'm surprised. Well, no, I'm not surprised, because Rachel wasn't there every day. But Rachel goes, man, the tension is in here. And he goes, nope. That's how it is with us. And yeah. she was like, really? And they both nodded their head. Like, this is what it's like between us. Yeah. That is some heavy karmic ties right there. Without words, they're just automatically not connecting. That's a block. Again, I will yeah. stick to that. I, was, I wasn't surprised, but I don't think that... I'm just really tired of Heather saying the same thing. You know, Derek, yeah. he's a nice guy. He's not yeah. a bad guy. Part and of that like, is we for all, the cameras, we all kind maybe. Of, well, no, yeah, and we all know that. And I think that's just kind of her way of being like, I I think maybe she might be as confused as we are. Like, I don't know why it didn't work. I don't know why I felt those ways. Like, I don't know why I felt those feelings. It's something she can really explain. So that's why I think that's all she can say is, he's a nice guy. I wish it could have worked, but it didn't. Yeah, I mean, we so, get it already, though. Like, yeah. I'm, I think the editing, they just keep editing it yeah, back. Yeah, that's true. We're, like, seeing the same thing getting replayed and replayed. Yeah. So. I, I will say this. I've never really, after hearing both of the couples that made it from season one and then really watching closely, I do see where Derek does get upset quickly. Yeah, I versus just, Doug. Yes. she. When Jamie said that, it really did click because Doug, I mean, Jamie was very raw in season mm-hmm. one, and we saw that even in the first year, Married at First Sight mm-hmm. the first year. Doug was patient. Doug was committed. That's a direct reflection, I think, of his upbringing as well. I always think that. But Derek, quick to that, it hurt. Yeah, he did. He did say some. He did say some fighting, fighting words. But I I, I don't fault him for it. But versus Doug, yeah, I do see. Even tonight, when he said, "What are you waiting for?" I was like, "Oh." There's maybe what yeah. we didn't get. A, maybe what we didn't get to see. Yeah, you know? and and I mean, she did probably need someone that was a little bit more patient that can understand where she's coming from and open her up. You know, like let's sit down, let's talk about this. Hey, let's have a glass of wine and we can chat about what you're feeling and how we can. And he clearly would just he. I think he maybe let his emotions maybe get too much of him. As so well. it was interesting when she was talking about how or Doug was saying that they were one of the first couples, obviously because it was season one, and that there weren't any before them to fail or succeed. Mm-hmm. Is it interesting? interesting that two of the only two succeeding cup, actual successful couples were in season one and then season two and season three failed? I think that's because people noticed that they got attention and they wanted to be celebrities. I don't believe people so came like on for the right a reasons. a subconscious thing, you think? Yeah, and I'm not, again, I don't, I'm not saying all and every single one of them, but my intuition from remembering certain individuals, the men, to be honest, more so than men. Mm-hmm. I recognize the this look in their eyes. I can, you know, you can read a lot in someone's eyes and I notice just different looks, not awe. I think Neil was 100% in it. 
I believe David was in it. Ryan, not so much. Um, d- different people from different yeah. seasons. I'm not surprised. I think the first time around, it was it was very much something taken seriously. I know that they don't call anybody and say, hey, this is married at first sight. It's a pitched as a love experiment. Yeah. And that is what gets yeah, people Yeah, and engaged. especially the first season, you would have no idea if it was going to work, and you would really be like, I'm just in it for marriage. And you you didn't know it would be a big you know, phenomena on TV. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, d- I think bringing Pastor Cal on this season was a very good move, though. He's saying some heavy hitting, amazing stuff like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, for, I mean, with Sonia, I hate the, I, this is the one that he's talking about. I think they're perfect for each other, mm-hmm. but she's missing out on love. And I see her fighting that, too. I really mm-hmm. do believe she, out of everybody on, on this, I think they all really wanted it. I, mm-hmm. I will say that. She really, really, really was ready. And I, I commend her for that. And I hope... As much as I, I hope she moves back in. Yeah, I wish the coaches would just force her to and just say, this is a love exercise. This, yeah. is, this is for your own good. You need to move back in. I'm surprised that they haven't. And, yeah. and Nick, you need to go buy her roses and pretend like yeah. it was your idea. Yeah, where are the yeah. coaches? <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, coaches, sure. yeah, where is that? Again, like, why aren't you on the phone saying, "Get do this, do this, do this? I get coaching is purposeful inquiry, and we're not supposed to lead, but sometimes you need to lead people. At this yeah. point, you need well, that's to just lead like a them. friend. Yes. A friend. Your friend's going to tell you, hey, I, you need to go bring her flowers. Just like Rick was saying, like, you need to tell her why you want her back. Like, you need to express those feelings. But I feel like, no, everybody's just, like, hands off. Yeah, that's really hands on when it comes to being like, oh, you know, like, don't drink. Like, when he's drinking and saying you have to be. But hands off when you openly know that one of the participants has moved out and taken her ring off. Yeah. Yeah, that is not a good look on. I don't know if they weren't in the same area or what, but great point well they they have crew in the house so they know what's going on yeah so i guess they probably just want to not interfere because they say it's an experiment not probably not a produced reality show so maybe they're just like we're seeing what's we're just watching it happen but the coaches should say this is an experiment that we put you in and we want you to succeed because they did do that with heather and Derek. like they tried to get her not to move out but they let her i bet that's probably part of the reason why too because if heather got to go home why didn't someone else get to go home that's true but i also feel like maybe that should have been talked about in one of their exercises you know like maybe it should have been like what do you want him to do to make you come back? Like, why hasn't this mm. been talked about? Because we, we obviously talked, well, I guess we kind of did last episode. I think she doesn't know, though. Because yeah. she said that she's looking for something and doesn't know what. But I think just any effort would be what she's looking for. Yeah. Well, again, with Tom and Lillian at the end, I love that they got to, they showed us and we got to hear what they were afraid of. Tom is still stuck on Lillian, maybe not thinking he's good enough. Again, that financial thing that we hear, that was surprising. Yeah. And we, we heard them both say, I'm just nervous if the other one really wants to be with me at the end. Yeah. But they're going to work out. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, let's get into some predictions. Okay. Oh, yes. The good old predictions. And now, I'm excited you're to hear after Buzz TV. <laughs> Heather, do you want to go first this time? Do you want me to? Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so my predictions this time around, I believe that we are going to see Tom get confrontational in a productive way with Lillian about Mm -hmm. work Mm -hmm. and paying attention. Okay. I believe Sonya will move back in before the end. I think you pretty much summed it up. That's what I was thinking too. I'll, especially, especially the Sonia Nick thing. I think we're going to see them put more effort in this episode mm-hmm. or next episode. Yeah. Um, and then I just feel like exactly what you said about Tom Lillian. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you guys. And I think especially because there's only two weeks left, I'm hoping that Nick and Sonia see there's not much time left that they got to just go for it and just say we're going to try because. What do they have to lose? Yes, yeah. Yes. Too sure. Yeah. Everything needs to be out on the table at this point. Well, you guys should definitely let us know your predictions in the comments below and be sure to tweet us as well. We love it when you comment on YouTube and iTunes. It's so great to hear your thoughts. And you can tweet me at JamieBanks underscore. And I also just started my YouTube channel. It'd be awesome if you could check it out. And what about you guys? You can find me at Heather Yared on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm Allie Nasta. And you can find me on Twitter at Allie Nasta. We'll see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 